M on type 1 and type 2 error. Now, this is a non MGTOW related topic. This is a topic that is just for general educational purposes. I will hope that you will apply it to various other aspects of your life. And this is a rant, so I will be wondering a bit. But M on type 1 and type 2 error. Uh, this is basic science leading into basic understanding of statistics. Uh, it's important to understand the philosophical mindset of a scientist. It's also important to understand why experiments are done, and then later statistically how they are analyzed. After I define type 1 and type 2 error, you can stop the video. After that, I will tell you what little I remember about advanced statistical analysis. I study, so I've studied statistical analysis at both the undergraduate and graduate levels. Ultimately, there are lies, damn lies, and then statistics, as Mark Twain has said. So, type 1 and type 2 error. Type 1 error is where you find something that is not there to find. A false positive. A commenter on one of my other videos misused false positive, which led to this. A type 1 error is where you think you found something that is actually not there. It's not real. You think you found a causative agent that leads to an effect. You think you found a variable that matters to what you are trying to observe or test for. Type 1 error. Important to understand that that's just being wrong. You're wrong. And type 1 error will go into later what we're talking about, alpha and beta significance, uh, confidence intervals. Type 1 error. You find something that is not there to find. A false positive. Biologically speaking, uh, DNA testing, uh, PCR analysis. There are a lot of reasons for false positives. But philosophically speaking, the idea you need to have in your head and understand is that you think you found something that isn't actually there. You, it's, it's not real. It's imagined. It's made up. Type 1 error. False positive. Now, type 2 error is a little more interesting, and we'll go into beta power significance later on. Type 2 error is where you fail to find something that is there to find. Okay? You, you, you went looking for something. It was there to find it. It, it was there to be found. And you failed. You, you messed up. There was an answer. There was something of significance there. You went looking for it. You didn't find it. That's type 2 error. More commonly and popularly defined by Donald Rumsfeld, who is, quite frankly, probably a mad genius. Donald Rumsfeld said, The absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. Yes, this is very true. This is a poetic and kind of dickish way of defining type 2 error. Yes, just because you have no evidence of something being there doesn't mean that something is not there. Now, this sort of goes away from MGTOW and more towards uh, atheism. This is what a lot of uh, atheists claim. And this is sort of the problem, the sort of uh, disagreement that theists and atheists have. And what atheists want is positive affirmative proof, right? Uh, they want a declarative statement, uh, evidence of a god. And where the theists often mess up is that they should just say, hey, absence of evidence, not the evidence of absence. Right? And then, really, the debate should end there. There's no reason to go on any further. I will say this puts God in an awkward position, you know, being sort of like a internet troll, the greatest internet troll of all time. If God was around and he did want to be worshipped, why wouldn't he give you a verifiable proof of his existence? Right? But, whatever. Okay. Psychologists say um, belief in God can be uh, hope. You believe in God, you, you believe in hope. You have hope. That's fine. All right, so there you go. Type 1 error. You find something that's not there to find. False positive. Right? Type 2 error. You don't find something that is there to find. False negative. Bam. Philosophically speaking, that's all you really need to know about science and statistical analysis. For those who want to check out here, please do. Now going on to basic statistical analysis. It's been many years since I've studied this. I may be getting a few technical definitions wrong. Uh, but in general, you have what is called a alpha and beta significance. Uh, alpha is sort of your confidence ratio or interval that you did not 
commit a type 1 error. That you actually did find something that was actually there to find. Alpha significance in the College of Liberal Arts is generally accepted at about the 0 0.05 level, the 5% level. In uh, biology, chemistry, an alpha significance uh, level is generally acceptable at the 0 0.01 level, the 1% chance that you're committing a type 1 error. For harder sciences like physics, you know, they use a 0 0.001 alpha interval. So it's important to understand when you're reading uh, psychology research, when you're reading sociology research, feminist research, gender studies research, practically anything out of the College of Liberal Arts is operating on a 0 0.05 significance level. So there's a 5% chance that they're wrong. You should read an article or journal from in these fields from the perspective that one out of 20 of these articles are wrong, that they've made a type 1 error, they've committed type 1 error. Now when you're dealing with biology, evolutionary science journals, generally there's only a 1% chance. Instead of 1 in 20 with the 5% chance in the College of Liberal Arts that they committed type 1 error, when you're dealing with the journal science, the journal evolution, right, typically there's only a 1% chance they've committed type 1 error. How should I say a 1 in 100? It's a lot better. And when you're dealing with, you know, engineering journals, physics, astrophysics, they're almost absolutely certain about what they're saying. Otherwise, it wouldn't get published. Now, on to beta significance. Beta significance is what is termed power. And it's going to get kind of cagey here. And I, it's been a few years, I may not be technically right in some of my technical terms, but beta significance is what is also referred to as power. To jack up a power of a study, you usually have a large sample, a giant sample, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of either uh, ends, ends being populated like uh, subjects, data points, right? Or you do something over and over and over again. The classic example of beta being abused or power being abused is, and this is where it gets kind of interesting, is a, when a machine, when you program a machine, like a robot, to flip a coin, the odds are 50-50. When a machine flips a coin, there's a 50% chance that the coin will land up heads and a 50% chance it will land tails. 50-50. But when a person does it, when you have people do it, the ratio, the percentage, the chance is actually skewed a little. There's a 51% chance that the coin will land with the, if it's the coin started face up, the person is doing it, there's a 51% chance the coin will land face up, and a 49% chance it'll land face up. Right? So this is kind of interesting, and this goes into prayer research, prayer studies. This is extremely interesting and, and almost uh, points to will, a sort of human element, because it doesn't show up in studies of animals. It doesn't show up in the, to any other research that has to do with anything that's not a human. When a person or when people are involved, there does seem to be a slight skew towards probabilities not being observed properly. Right, a 51% chance that a coin that was flipped by a person that was heads up to begin with will land heads up at the end. Right? Now it's also important to understand this is just a 1% chance. The 1% increase. But it is there. Right? So this goes to the whole idea of the power of prayer. This goes to the whole idea of the belief in God. And, and, and so when you're reading religious studies, when you're reading studies that religious people cite when addressing atheists, you have to understand that what these studies have done in order to jack up their alpha or to force their alpha significance down below the 0 0.05 significance level is they've jacked up their beta. They've either done something tens of thousands of times included tens of thousands of people, or did what is called a meta-analysis, where they lump a bunch of previous studies, research together that have similar factors, similar variables. They filter out all the variables that 
aren't common and consistent between the studies. Want those variables back into other factors and then rerun statistical analyses and see what happens. Now usually meta-analyses are awesome, like if you're dealing with biology, cancer research, environmental pollution, uh, even sociology. Like any paper that starts out as a meta-analysis is probably really good, right? But what they've done here is they're jacking up their beta. Right? They're, they're, they're bumping up their power. And when you bump up the power, your alpha level goes down and you become more certain that you're not committing a type 1 error. So that's important to understand when you're reading uh, religious study papers, when you're reading feminist study papers, even sociology and psychology study papers. Any paper that makes a claim that on its face seems absurd and then makes a claim that the absurd claim is supported, that they have a, a very low alpha, they have a very strong confidence interval that they didn't commit a type 1 error, you need to understand that what they've done is they've jacked up their beta. They've jacked up their power. Uh, this is uh, disingenuous, generally speaking, but there you go. That's the philosophical mindset, type 1, type 2 error, alpha, beta significance, and how you can sort of screw with statistics to make outrageous claims seem true. And it's important to keep in mind that this happens whenever you're dealing with people in systems, whenever you're dealing with large groups of people doing things tens of thousands of times. It's important to understand that there does seem to be a human element involved that doesn't show itself statistically when dealing with anything else on the planet Earth. It's very important to understand that. I think that's interesting. It's also important to understand that even if what they're saying is true, on their best day, you maybe increase your chance of whatever by 1%. Is that a better chance than winning the lottery? Yes, definitely. But whenever someone makes an outrageous claim and their alpha is real low, they're, they're, they're really confident they didn't make a type 1 error, you need to immediately check their power, the size of their beta. What's their beta index? What's, their, their, what's the measurement of their beta? And I guarantee you, it's they they have a huge either a huge sample or they've done something a whole lot of times over and over again. There you go. It's not really a big town topic, kinda, but there you go, guys. You guys have a nice day, and always remember to go your own way. Yours truly, M.